would I take a moment to welcome all of you today. Especially glad for friends who have joined us to be with family as we uh, give thanks for the gift of Tom's life and as we again commend him into God's eternal care. You'll notice that the colors we're wearing today are red because today is Pentecost, a day when we remember that the Spirit is moving among us and through us, and my deep prayer is that uh, you would know comfort in that presence of God with you now and always. Our service is printed before us. Uh, places where we are singing, uh, we'll indicate that. The hymns are found in the red hymnal that you see in the pew rack in front of you. I'll invite you to stand as we begin. No, I won't. We're going to sing. Sorry, Judy. <laughs> we'll let you sit. Well, <laughs> there is a lot of music today, <laughs> and for that we're grateful. Would you please stand as we continue? Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Tom, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. 
We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We'll invite you to be seated as we continue with the hymn, Shall We Gather at the River, number 423. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Tom. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time, uh, Mary... Tom's granddaughter is going to speak in behalf of the family, so. Good 
Good afternoon. For anyone who might not know me, my name is Mary Beers, and I am Tom's oldest granddaughter. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate and remember my grandpa's life. As I prepared some thoughts for you today, I quickly realized how hard it would be to share just a few things with you. This is largely because my grandpa greatly valued time with family, and he was a big part of my life growing up. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so visiting each other involved a 10-hour car ride each way. Despite the distance, he and grandma drove out each winter for my birthday, and then often again in the spring for my sister's birthday as well. In adulthood, he was there for every milestone, even my baby shower, which he couldn't actually attend since baby showers tend to be for women only. But he still showed up to help set up and clean up, even though he was limited in how much he could move. He always took pride in us, and he showed his care for us by celebrating our accomplishments whenever he could. One milestone that stands out to me is learning how to drive a car. If you knew my grandfather, you probably knew how much he enjoyed driving, whether it was making deliveries for the farm or uh, cruising around the Pennsylvania countryside visiting different Amish farms. When all of us grandchildren started learning how to drive, Grandpa was happy to ride in the passenger seat and offer driving advice to us. My favorite driving memory with him was when he rode with me a few weeks after I got my learner's permit. He apparently had a lot of confidence in my driving skills because just as I was driving into town, he fell asleep. I was an overly cautious driver, and when a traffic light turned yellow as I was about to go through it, I quickly slammed on the brakes rather than go through that yellow light. Despite being really awakened by my jerky driving, he was very patient and he was kind, and he just told me to keep an eye out for what he called old green lights, uh, which he explained were traffic lights that had been green for a while and were likely to turn yellow at any time. That advice still comes to mind uh, even today when I'm driving. Another piece of favorite driving advice that Grandpa gave to all of us grandchildren was how to maximize our gas mileage by accelerating slowly as we were driving. He was constantly peeved that all of us grandchildren hit the gas pedal way too hard by his standards. One favorite family story is when Melanie was a new driver and Grandpa went driving with her. He was not a fan of how quickly she drove and he told her to imagine an egg under the gas pedal. If she hit the, paddle, the, uh, the gas pedal too hard, the egg would break. Melanie's reply to him, I like my eggs crushed. <laughs> I'm not sure how funny Grandpa found that in the moment, uh, but a few months later, he gifted Melanie with a tin full of crushed eggshells. Grandpa enjoyed giving gifts, and he was good at giving us things that we didn't know we needed. Every time we visited each other, he would hand me a shopping bag full of cheese. When my husband and I started dating, he must have looked at my tall, skinny boyfriend and decided that cheese wasn't enough because the shopping bag suddenly started including whippy pies in addition to the cheese. During the holidays, Grandpa never referred to a Christmas list when buying gifts for the family, and it was funny to see what his gifts for us would be each year. Sometimes the gifts would be practical, like a knife sharpening set, or they would be something that would keep us safe, like a nylon safety bracelet that came packed with a fire starter, safety whistle, and mini compass. Perhaps the most memorable gift was the flashlight and stun gun combination that our parents immediately confiscated. <laughs> Grandpa really enjoyed gospel music, and I have memory, many memories of visiting with him um, and hearing hymns playing in the background. Many years ago, he decided to teach all of us grandchildren the short hymn, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. He wanted it to be a surprise for the rest of the family, so he herded us into the warehouse on the farm one afternoon before our family dinner, and he did his best to get us to sing as well as we could. Grandpa was not musically gifted himself, and unfortunately for him, Anna was the only grandchild who could sing with any real talent. The rest of us were not very enthusiastic about singing, to say the least. Nonetheless, he persevered, and we did sing that song that evening, but he never tried, us, tried to get us to sing after that. While I am still not a singer, I think Grandpa would be happy to know that I have grown to appreciate hymns more than I did that afternoon in the warehouse. I remember listening to an album of hymns as Grandpa started to go downhill back in March. There was one song in particular entitled, His Mercy is More, that stuck out to me, and I would like to read part of it for you. What patience would wait as we constantly roam, what father so tender is calling us home. He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. What riches of kindness he lavished on us, his blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath a debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. As I have grieved the loss of my grandfather over the past few months, my thoughts have often gone to what lies on the other side of life. Death is a hard thing to contemplate, but in those moments, I have turned to my best and most confident hope, my hope in Jesus Christ. As someone who has sinned and trespassed against God, I owed a debt that I could never hope to repay, but because of God's great mercy, he has given me a new life and a new hope through Jesus' death and resurrection. 
I will miss Grandpa's presence for the rest of my life, but I grieve with hope knowing that death is not final and that there is eternal life for those who trust in Jesus. In closing, I want to say again how grateful I am to have had so many wonderful years with my grandpa. He loved us well, he took care of us well, and I'm so glad that he was our grandpa. We love you and we will miss you, grandpa. And uh, Judy Newman has a piece to share as well. <clears throat> I'm Judy Newman, for those of you who don't know me. I'm not part of the Jaeger family, but I could be because I've known them <clears throat> forever. <laughs> <I've> <clears throat> and I could tell you stories about Mark when he was that little person's size <laughs> and Sandy. But first, I want to say thank you to Eleanor and Mark and Sandy for asking me to sing. That is a huge privilege for me to do. Tom was probably one of my biggest fans and would never hesitate to let me know that. And that's something I've learned from him and I try to let others know when they do something that touches me. Thank you. We had several talks. His big thing was he had to talk to me before he, to plan his funeral music. Well, we would still be talking, if you can't imagine that. Um, I'm not sure if it was like this with um, family discussions or not, but we would start on something really good, and we're talking about music, and it would take us down another road. <laughs> but I love traveling those roads, and you need to know that some of those roads always included you. He, he could never stop talking about his family every single, I feel like I know every single one of you because of the stories that he shared. We were on the phone several times. I, I, I visited him a couple times when he was at Bethany. Unfortunately, with COVID, did not get to him in the hospital, but thanks to technology, we had some nice phone conversations that were interrupted and then picked up. <laughs> and I cherish those. And I just want to tell you about one thing. I want to <clears throat> let you know that, yeah, gospel music was his big thing, and he would tell me a lot about things. He kept trying to tell me about this one song that you just told us about, but he couldn't remember the name, and he couldn't remember enough of the words to get me. I, I was trying to pick out things. I could never get it. So thank you for bringing that and sharing that today. That meant a lot to him. The other thing was he wanted the song Hallelujah. And that is Leonard Cohen's song. And we had, I can tell you easily, a half hour conversation on who does the best version of it. He believed Katie Lang, but have you ever heard? And then he'd go into some others. Well, I called Eleanor the other day and I said, I'm, I, I, I like the song too. And I said, and, and people will know it, but because you may not know the verses, but you'll know the last part, which is hallelujah, hallelujah, right? I said, I don't think Tom ever listened to the verses. It is biblical, it talks about biblical stories, it tells stories, but it doesn't say who they are, and you really have to have some background to understand that, and it wasn't quite sitting right with me. So I sent something to Eleanor, and I said I took the liberty of rewriting some verses that to me sound more, that meant more about who Tom was, hopefully to you and to me, and so it's on this sheet here, and he must have told me a different story. You said you didn't have a lot of singers. All he would talk about were the singers in his family. <laughs> so I was so anxious, and he says, and then we're going to have this and this and this, and if, if it were up to him and we weren't in this pandemic, it would have been an hour and a half concert, and it would have been wild, 
and it would have been fun, and it would have been loud, and it would have been celebrating his Savior. You still got a couple chances to do that with me. There's still a couple of congregational hymns. You sing, I don't care if you're on key. I don't think Tom did either. He just loved the music. So sing those. If you're so moved and you know this song well enough, sing it with me. And let's be the best choir we can be. Let's be the best concert choir we can be. And we can be off key, but we, let's do it for Tom. And let's have fun with it. It's, a, it, it's hard to say goodbye, but I'm not saying goodbye because we would always end with, okay, I'll talk to you again soon. I'll talk to him again soon. I still talk to him now. I say, Tom, you give me a sign. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. So he actually helped me write a few of these. So I hope you will get the message out of that song, but I truly hope you will take those lessons that he taught you. And I hope today you will also smile and maybe even laugh. You have a little bit about what Tom was. And someday when you got more time, I'm happy to sit down and tell you stories that I know from over, I hate to say, 60 years. <laughs> Thank you again for letting me be a part of this day. Thank you, Judy. We do continue with one of those congregational hymns, It Is Well With My Soul, number 785, found in our hymnals.
A reading from Job. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare, snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, or the deconstruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On, your, on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will not tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation.
A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? Lord. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mar Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Congregation may be seated. I didn't know, I didn't have the pleasure of knowing Tom for very long. But in the short amount of time that I did know him, there were a few things that stood out to me. Tom was quite the character, and he wasn't afraid to show it. When I would go and visit him, of course, I'd introduce himself as Vicar Katie from First Lutheran Church. And every time he'd say, Katie, I can't remember that name. You need to come up with a new one. <laughs> So Tom called me Vicar Cat, a name that he found amusing because it reminded him of cats on the farm, but was still just my name but shorter. He also loved to remind me every time that I visit that I am getting married on his birthday. In our time together, it came out that I was engaged and I would be married, and so he asked me the date, as anyone would. When I told him October 9th, he said, when you get married, you have to remember that it's my birthday. And he would start every visit and end every visit with that reminder. Don't forget, when you get married, it's my birthday. Remember me. I also learned that Tom was a very passionate man. He told me so many stories about the work that he did and the places that he traveled for work. He was one of an elite few who actually know where I'm from, small town of 900, Anawan, Illinois. He liked to remind me that he traveled there or through there often and had many stories about the people that he met on his way and how he cared for each and every one of them. I also learned that Tom loved his family with his whole heart. 
There wasn't a visit that I didn't hear about how much he loved you all, but he didn't need to say it. The love he had for each and every one of you was clear. I could see it in the way his face lit up, and his smile got even bigger as he told stories of your childhoods and how you were growing up or how you met. I'll cherish those. Finally, I learned that Tom knew and loved Christ more than most people that I know. Whenever I read from the book of Psalms, he knew the text, no matter how obscure. There were times I even tried to trick him, and he still knew the text. He was a strong believer. And when we prayed, there was a visible sense of calm that came over him, a calm that Tom now has in his life with Christ. I hope that you can have today, too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vicar. Beloved ones, this day has been a day long in coming, hasn't it? I would that we could have done this a few months ago in the immediacy after his death, we would have. And yet through this time and the time since, please know that your family has been held close in prayer and in love, and that continues to be so. So I've been thinking about uh, Tom as we, as we come to this hour now. I've been finding myself living anyway in the story of Nicodemus. I don't know if you know that story from the New Testament, from John's Gospel, where an old man goes to visit Jesus in the middle of the night. And they have this long theological discussion about, about life and about baptism and about, about new life. What struck me this week about Nicodemus was his insatiable curiosity. And he kept going back for more. And I think about him, not a young man, and Tom also not a young man, and how similar they were in some ways in that way, that, that sense of kept going back, kept asking the questions, kept making those connections. I saw that in his faith, it's been, it's been shared in a number of ways already today. I saw it in how he was with all of you, those closest to him. But I also witnessed it, as, as Vicar Katie has just demonstrated, the ways in which he would encounter strangers again and again, and he would come away knowing more about them than any one of us probably would because he kept asking, didn't he? Yeah. I believe he saw the face of God in everybody he met, and he lived like that was so. And yet he was living on this side of all that God intends for us, uh, especially that last year was hard, wasn't it? It's a lot of suffering, a lot of time in and out of the hospital, in and out of surgery, in and out of uh, extended care centers. I know and you know, especially in those last weeks, all he wanted to do was get home. And he did wasn't for very long, was it? But it was for long enough for him to be able to lie in that hospital bed, as we've said, and look out that back window onto that land, which was so much a part of him. And I can remember sitting that last, I think it was a Sunday, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah, and looking out with him, a train was going by, and I said, you see that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'd seen that hundreds and hundreds of times. He was home. And yet today, uh, beloved ones, we, we do celebrate this truth that Tom is home in all the ways that matter. And for you and I, uh, we're still standing on this side of where he is. And uh, one of the things I know for certain is that um, he died in March. It's now near the end of May. A couple of months later, there's a way in which uh, the reality of this sets in in ways you could not have known in March. Particularly now, as we start to get, quote, unquote, back to normal, there's that kind of reality that doesn't feel normal, does it? Because there's this big piece of who you are and, and what's made you who you are that's brought you to this point in your life and in your faith that is, is no longer physically present. This is when the grieving gets hard. What I want you to hear now is the promise that, that Tom clung to all of his life, that uh, Jesus never let him go. And I would invite you to hear that in words I know he loved, uh, that uh, 
that piece of uh, Isaiah 43. I've called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you, not even these rivers here. When you walk through fire, which threatens to burn, you shall not be burned. The flame shall not consume you. For God is saying this to you, dear ones, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior. You are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. When it's hard, I would invite you to remember that promise. Okay. Also from uh, Psalm 121, that little bit at the end where, where we hear the promise that God watches over our going out and our coming in from this time forth and forevermore, God is watching over you now. Certainly that beloved 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. This is my prayer for you now, is that in the midst of the hardness of it, you would continue to hear that, that you are beloved in God's sight. As Tom was and is and always will be, so will you be. Jesus goes before you and beside you and with you through it all. Again, know that our prayers run deep as we, uh, as we remember your beloved Tom in perhaps ways different than you do, but all together making up this really beautiful picture of who he was as we gather now to give thanks for his life again and to commend him into God's eternal care where he already is. Amen. So we sing again, hymn 879, For the Beauty of the Earth. Would you please stand as together we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure in certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to our light and life. God of mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll invite you to be seated.
you please stand? Let us commend Tom to the mercy of God, our maker and our redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Tom. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant make you complete in everything good that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So we'll ask you to be seated. I don't think you want to leave before the postlude song here. So, uh, right. Mark gives us a thumbs up, so I'm going to step to the back. Yeah.